Hello everyone, Kyle Stone here from Fruta, Colorado, which is on the western slope of Colorado, almost into Utah. And I'm gonna do a quick video of my workshop here as because I'm getting ready to move the High Country Sportsman out to my hangar this next week. It is currently uh, November 20th, 2021. And I've been working on this bird for about, um, oh, I guess a little over two years. I started July of 2019. So I think I'm somewhere around um, 28 months or something like that, or 26 months. Um, anyhow, um, making good progress on it. Pretty exciting, excited to get it out to the hangar. You won't see the wings in here because the wings are actually out in the hangar and uh, soon the airplane will be. But I've had some requests um, to uh, do a little video of my workshop and show you what I've got set up here. So I'm basically in a two car garage. Um, I can't remember the overall width, uh, but the height is a nice nine foot high ceilings. And I've got some cabinets over here that, um, you know, for all the gear and everything. But I got pretty lucky with spacing here. Everything has worked out great to build the wings, uh, horizontal stabilizer, elevator, everything I've done in this garage. So let me give you a little tour. I'm just going to start over here, um, kind of my workforce central place here. I think it's important to have a little motivational picture up of what you're doing. Um, I basically pulled those out of the uh, out of the front of the build manuals uh, that came with the plane. Um, so I've got those up there to keep motivating me to keep building uh, because I think motivation is a key part of your success. But I got my laptop here. I'm actually using an iPad quite a bit. Um, I use the EAA um, builder log and actually an iPad is easier to throw pictures in there uh, than the laptop is. But anyhow, I've got the laptop out here. I use it pretty regularly for looking things up and all of those things. I would suggest whatever your workstation is or work area is, have a, some sort of computer because you're going to be constantly looking up things from the glass air owner's form, the two week to taxi documents, the online PDF version of the build manual, and then you're going to be searching other forms. Vans Air Force is super helpful. Uh, a lot of guys install um, IO 390s over there and IO 360s and uh, similar engines that we're putting in our planes as well too. Um, you can see I've got a little heater down here. I just broke it out. Uh, starting to get a little cold around here. This garage is heated. I do have one vent um, back over here underneath the workbench and uh, that keeps things uh, a little warm in the winter and also in the summer keeps things a little bit cool. Um, so over here is my little kind of workshop area. It's pretty dirty right now. I've got stuff everywhere uh, kind of trying to clean up and get the plane moved out but I would say uh, some pieces of equipment that you definitely need. Well, I highly advise that you have a benchtop grinder. This one's just a Delta one, and I put the um, you know the uh, wheel on it. I can't remember what that's called, abrasive wheel on it. So that's super helpful when you're dealing with sheet metal. Got my safety protecting equipment up here. Don't mess with that stuff without face shield and on. Don't get stuff in your eyes. Got a, my grandfather's Craftsman um, bandsaw. That has been super helpful. I put a pretty small tooth blade on it, so I've been cutting everything I can on that. Really, really helpful. Um, ladders, so I just moved those because I've been working on the windshields. Um, I bought this thing at Harbor Freight when I first started my build. I really have not used it much. It just makes a lot of dust. Probably could have done without that. Um, let's see, drill press. Again, my grandfather's old Delta Homecraft drill press from the 1950s, probably. This thing has been rock solid. Um, done a lot of drilling, a lot of alignment holes on it. Up here, you can see I've got some cutting fluids, um, oil for the gun or the uh, drills and all that, and then um, uh, the grease for the, um, for the wheel bearings. And then just a cabinet of stuff down here, um, spray paint, things like that. Then my workbench is a complete mess right now. Um, I don't really, I use this workbench some, um, but really I've got benches out in the build area that I use more. Um, this becomes my waxing station here in another week or so for waxing my Nordic skis. Skiing season's kicking up. I've got a sink over here, which is pretty darn handy. All of my recycled patch packaging <laughs> um, keep collecting. Uh, I didn't, I that table saw was in somebody's trash the other day and I couldn't let it pass it up. I have not used a table saw on this thing, but um, you will use a cutoff saw though. I think my cutoff saw is down here. Um, I used a cutoff saw to cut the angles of the um, struts, which was super helpful. Um, right here is my uh, riveter. Sorry for the mess, but this thing has been just awesome. Um, so my pneumatic riveter, Pneumatex riveter, this thing is great. It's pretty expensive. I think I dropped 600 bucks on it if I remember right. 
but I put it on this board and all that, and man, it makes some nice rivets. Uh, probably not necessary, but um, it sure was helpful when I could use it. I wish I could have used it more. Um, down there, I've got my Dempler machine back there. I haven't used it for a while. My toolbox, not very organized. Um, I kind of keep my tools out here, what I'm using. You need basically, you know, shorties, um, you know, long wrenches, short wrenches, all sorts of fun things to put um, uh, cotter pins in. Obviously, you're going to need some wiring stuff, safety ties. This is my box of just, um, you know, different types of uh, Loctites that you're going to use. Um, JB Weld, other things. Um, yeah, and then I usually, when I'm working through the manual, I have the manual out, out here and I'm reading it, redlining it, and doing some things on that. Dial indicator, calipers, get you a set of those. Um, those are helpful. Clecos, man, it just seems like when I started building the wings, I just never had enough Clecos. I've lost track of how many Clecos I have. There's probably 100, 200 Clecos in there, if not more. Um, just buy plenty of Clecos. You're going to need them. And um, it sure makes things more efficient when you're not having to pull those things in and out all the time. Um, I have a couple sets of build manuals because my original horizontal stabilizer, my tail kit, I bought from a guy in California. And then, um, then I bought the fuselage from a guy in Arizona. Then I bought my wings from the factory. So I've got, um, I've got you know, different, uh, different build manuals. I ended up using the most current build manuals. Um, refrigerator, when you start to work with resin and all that, I got a little refrigerator down there. Um, I'm currently out of resin, hoping to get some shipped here soon because I got a little work I need to do still on the um, hatch covers. Um, so this is my kind of general work area for the fuselage. Now, when I was building the wings, I had my wing stand up basically where I'm standing, but I always have had this workbench here from the get-go. Um, I've changed the height on it a few times. Sometimes it was my wing jig. I built these tables, the EAA. Um, table uh, build plans is what I use. Um, pretty useful. And then when I started doing fiberglass work, I put some sheet metal over here to be able to, um, you know, saturate the fiberglass layers when you're doing some layups and things. Um, I tried this stuff here. It's kind of like a Formica, but it didn't really work. Obviously, you can tell when I sat down my first cup of resin, it started to get hot in that cup and basically ate through that. So it's just easy to clean up with that. Got all my mill fiber, Q-cell, um, Cabocell, all that stuff. I'm about out of mill fiber. I need some more, um, you know, geez, you, you need plenty of these guys. Um, you know, I can't, uh, I've got fours and eights and sixes and twelves. I'm not done um, clamping all the wires and everything, but just buy a bunch of those. These grip ties have been super helpful. Uh, these guys are out of Utah. Um, really like these grip lock ties for taking them on and putting them back on and off again. You know, I did a lot of thinking on compressors early on, and this compressor I've had for a good over over 10 years. It's Craftsman, you know, it's it's not oiled or anything. It's an oilless and I was gonna buy a new compressor early on in this build because I just thought it was gonna wear out. Well, this thing just keeps working, so I didn't buy a new compressor, and it has worked fine, and it's loud as all heck, so I wear headphones, earmuffs when it's running. Uh, clamps, you're gonna need a bunch of clamps for all sorts of di different things. You're gonna want a place to store all your little boxes, so I just use this. This is all the build boxes from the kits, and then um, it had an inventory that came with it. So I use this thing, this is all the parts. So if I'm looking for a part, I just see which tray it's in and look it up. Um, but get a system down for where you can find things pretty quickly. These are all the leftover boxes and rivets from the wings and things. And I started consolidating them a while back. Um, when you start working on the fuselage, you're gonna need a bunch of sandpaper and different grades and all that stuff. Up here, you'll see I have my horizontal stabilizer, my, um, uh, and my elevator, and you'll see I have two sets of those. Um, I actually built the one on the bottom, loved building it. Um, then the uh, the one on the top is basically uh, the one that came with the fuselage, and the gentleman I bought the uh, fuselage from, Jory Jones, he'd already fitted the horizontal stabilizer to the fuselage and drilled it, so I couldn't use mine. I did fit mine, and um, I think I could get it to work. It was pretty darn close, but I just decided I would go with the um, one that was fitted on there. I like, he did a really good job with all of the installation and everything. So I was pretty happy with it. And then I have a spare rudder as well too. Um, the other rudder is on top up here. Um, this on top of here has got a little bit out of control. This is just kind of my leftover parts, some fiberglass parts that I still have to put on. Um, and then over here are all the boxes from the avionics. I just can't throw boxes away for some reason in case I have a warranty 
issues. Um, so I've saved all those boxes from the avionics. And this is the last of kind of my parts that I need to put on um, that I've been, actually, I think everything is on there from there. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, the the plane, yeah. So this is, uh, this is the plane. Um, this is how it's coming along. The High Country Sportsman is uh, coming along nicely. I'm running the IO390 in it. Um, still got a little bit of wiring to do. These are the wiring for the lights. Still need to figure out how to mount my Baja lights in the cow. I'm going with cow lights. I just don't want to mess around with cutting into the wings. Um, but yeah, um, been just a ton of fun building this thing. Um, got my, uh, this is my charger for my battery. Um, so I've got it routed to inside the, the cabin so I can charge it from inside the cabin should I need to. And also I'm going to put an external charge on as well. Um, you see my nose gear. I've got the uh, Tundra tire on there. That's a 6.0 tire, a brand new one. I'm going to be putting, um, eight and a half. So right here, um, I, I went to order eight and a half about a month ago and they're like back ordered till the end of January. I've no idea. Well, I know why, because the supply chain is all worked up, but I'm probably going to fly it off with these sixes. They're the original tires in the fuselage kit, which are from 20, 2007. So I'm not super excited about spending too much time on those. They look fine. They've been in some sort of environment, controlled environment their whole life, but I'm just a little nervous of putting too many hours on those. My fairings, I love the fairings. I was I was so scared about building these fairings. I just had never done much fiberglass work. And with studying that and practicing, I'm really happy with how my fairings came out. They look like crap because I haven't, you know, put body cover on them or body fill or anything on them yet. Um, but I've sanded them down to a point where I'm pretty happy with them. Um, so that was super fun doing that. The windows, I've just got done with the windows here. I've been messing with these windows for probably about two and a half weeks. Another fun adventure to go through. I had no idea how I was going to do these. I was pretty apprehensive about doing them. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I'm I'm super happy with how they came out. Got a little work to do on them. Um, this was the first window I did. And my seam here didn't turn out as nice as Zach's seams. So I'll probably clean that up at some point and re-seal proof that um, at some point. I had a little weird thing with my doors. So my doors were kind of... Uh, a hybrid between the old doors and new doors. When I bought the fuselage kit, I thought it had all the door components on it for the new doors, new style doors, which it did, except for the hardware for the um, front doors. Um, so it had the hardware for the back door here, but all the hardware that came for the front doors, it had the new sportsman doors on it, but the old hardware in it. So I got to buy a hardware kit from Glass Air for $1,000, um, which was kind of like a um, oopsie, I guess, when I bought the kit. I didn't vet that out enough. Um, my seat pans are sitting here right now. Um, I have not done anything back here on the bottom of, to cover up my cables yet. Um, other than, you know, I've got all the back stuff all done and everything. I'm going to fly it off and then come back and worry about what I'm going to do with that. I really don't have a desire to put a back seat in it. I may do a jump seat or something so I could throw somebody in there if need be, but I want to haul gear. And so I'm probably going to do some fiberglass work on that next summer and um, finish that all out. Um, but um, yeah, so the avionics, uh, you guys have been following my build, you know about the avionics, all that stuff. Really fun um, time doing that. I've got um, the floorboards out. I'm actually painting them with Flex Seal right now. I'm going to mount my fire extinguisher where that little lantern is. My CO detector, I'm going to mount somewhere. Um, but everything down here is pretty much done. I got to run the wires, obviously, for when I mount the wings, all of my antenna wiring and um, my GMU will get mounted in the wings. Um, but everything in here is is um, about as done as I'm going to do right now. Um, I just love my little light up here. This guy came out really nice. I got a little switch. I can make it white or red. Got my connectors. I did put connectors in the back for additional... Um, headsets, but um, anyhow, uh, these are Wix um, seat belts, uh, four point seat belt system. They're gonna be a little too short, so I've got glass air ones on order. Um, and as you know, they're having a hard time getting stuff too, so I'm waiting for those to come in. But I got the seat belt so I can at least start taxing it and driving it around if I need to. Just got the window front windshield all set in today. I've been messing with that. Probably got about 10 or 12 hours in trimming and fitting that over this week. Um, but it's basically all set. It's temporarily secured with the uh, wing neck Clecos backed up with some uh, metal pads so it won't go anywhere or pull through the fiberglass. 
Um, Zach's tutorials are just awesome on that. And he's been a huge help whenever I had a question. It's been super helpful um, fleshing that out. Um, spinner, uh, all that's done. Cowling's fit. I'm going to put some heat shield on the bottom of the cowling and then um, put that cowling on. It'll be good to go. Um, on this side of the workshop is basically my electronic side. So I tried to isolate the electronic and the panel build on one side from an area where I need to do um, some grinding and cutting and things. Um, so yeah, so this is where I basically built my panel and did all the wiring for the avionics. Um, I kind of started a, uh, you know, this is the G3X manual. Um, I didn't really want to read that initially, but at the end of the day, you got to read it. You got to go through it to understand it. I thought I could just reference it, but I really needed to uh, read it and everything. Um, this put a binder together with all of your, you know, anything that comes with a piece of avionics or piece of equipment. I basically made a little, uh, uh, holder for them. So all of these guys are in here. If I ever need to reference them, I've got everything located in here, um, instruction manuals or whatnot. I prefer to have those electronically, but some of the stuff still just comes in a hard copy. So I will have both. And then, um, obviously all the manuals, TSO manual for the 375, the 255, the 245, the hard cell propeller, and then just miscellaneous stuff. It's a little bit messy right now. I'm not necessarily doing um, avionics work on it anymore, but you know, wire, I don't know what to recommend on buying wire. I think I basically ended up buying about $2,000 worth of wiring by this has been all said and done. Um, my label making right now is temporary. I use this little brother touch label maker to do my labels and they're okay, um, but I'm gonna come back and clean those up at some point. Um, this cart, um, when you're doing your avionics, I think I bought this cart at Home Depot or Lowe's. I'm not sure where I got it, but this was super helpful. Um, I used to do a little bit of uh, wiring work back in the day, one of my college days and things, and I was a field engineer for a number of years. Um, so I like having things where I can pull it to the area I'm working in. So actually, I think I used it like this. And, um, you know, my tools, a uh, little holders for my tools, a um, little shadow boarding um, to some extent. Um, that's not where that goes. But anyhow, um, you know, this is all of your little D-sub pins. Um, make you a little holder at the end of the day. It took me a while to just figure out what I was dealing with when I started wiring everything. But at the end of the day, you basically have um, three different size of pins and sockets. Uh, really two different size of pins and two different size of sockets. And then, um, you know, that's pretty much where it goes. And you got shielded cable and non-shielded cable, which pretty much everything I put in was shielded cable. Here's my little fixture I made for cutting my coax cable and splicing my my um, splicing my D sub fin D sub stuff to for your grounded shield and little razor blades and all that good stuff. Zip ties I've got them sitting right over here on this um, little trash bin that you can empty. Um, you know a zip tie crimper guy. You know helps crimp your zip ties nice and tight. You know shrink wrap. I uh, basically was. Um, you know, shrink wrapping or shrink wrap. Yeah, shrink wrapping, a lot of stuff. Heat gun, I went through two heat guns. This is my second heat gun. My first one basically died on me, but it was probably 15, 20 years old anyway. So what the heck, got a new heat gun. Um, trying to think what else. Um, fire extinguisher, getting ready to put it in today. Um, CO monitor, gonna mount it as well. Down here is just kind of some things I have left to mount, the antennas um, for the, uh, column antennas one and two my lights um my oil is in the engine my spinner that um <laughs> you know takes a lot of cutting in and out and things like that but yeah so that's um that's basically my garage up top i have my struts and everything kind of stored up there some of the long stuff i don't know over there oh fishing poles climbing gear all that stuff's up there um, i just painted my floorboards with the um, flex seal, I'm gonna see how that works. They're just the plywood, I'm gonna flip them over, paint the other side, and uh, that's gonna be good um, on that. Uh, yeah, don't, don't push on that. That's, uh, these things were super fun to put in. They were challenging, but I'm pretty happy with how it all came out. Um, a lot of work on those, but it was pretty fun to do. Um, over here, I've got my hoist. So this orange one is a, one that I borrowed from another builder. 
which has been super helpful. I've borrowed it from them a number of times. And then I've been keeping an eye on Facebook Marketplace and this one came up from somebody, I paid a hundred bucks for it. It's actually collapsible. So having a hoist, this is just an engine hoist, is gonna be super helpful because if I wanna change tires, wanna lift the nose up, whatever I'm gonna do, I'm gonna need a hoist to work on this plane. Um, so I just went ahead and bought one. These things are gonna move out to the hangar here pretty soon. All right, so that is a walk around my garage um, that I have built all the wings in. Um, I have uh, put the fuselage together, done all the work in here, and um, yeah, so it's worked out really well. Um, if you guys have questions, feel free to reach out. I thought I would just shoot a video before this thing is out of here and it's going back to somewhat of a garage and then I'll be maybe do a video out in the uh, hangar at some point, kind of document the build a little bit there. All right, uh, see you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.